According to a 2021 Bloomberg intelligence analysis, the metaverse could unlock an $800 billion market opportunity. But what specifically are those opportunities? A lot of them are just things we can already do, albeit more immersive or virtual. For example, sell digital clothing or advertise on a virtual billboard or buy yourself a piece of virtual land. These are commercial opportunities for sure, but they're not new. According to Professor Mark Johnson's research, over 30% of business model innovations in the early 2000s were enabled by the internet. They simply could not have happened without it. We could be at the edge of a similarly transformational period. The metaverse is built on different technological principles such as decentralization and it gives us a lot more space to experiment. So in this video series we'll tackle the most exciting metaverse business models one by one with a real focus on things that we simply can't do today but might be able to do tomorrow. It's worth checking out the high-tech video specials on NFTs and the metaverse as primers for this content. They might be helpful. Today, we're looking at NFT royalties. When you buy a non-fungible token, it's not always clear what IP rights you get, if any. NFTs at the moment are usually tokens that can be bought and then resold on platforms like OpenSea. When you buy a token for an artwork like this one, you can then resell it and you keep the profits. But the original creators can now set a sell-on royalty percentage when they mint their tokens. Other platforms like Zora are building this into their platform too. So when you mint an NFT on Zora, you can set your creator share. So for example, if I sell an NFT for 10 Ether and set my creator share at 10%, then a buyer resells it for 20 Ether, I would receive an additional 2 Ether, 10% from that sale too, and so on. Sounds pretty good, right? But a couple of points to note before we move on. First, this standard does not apply outside of Zora right now and the OpenSea version only works on OpenSea and so on. Second, this kind of contract does already exist in the art world, even if it's not that well known. According to Australian law, for example, artists and other right holders are entitled to 5% of the sale price from eligible artworks resold commercially for $1,000 or more. But this only applies if they're sold on the open market and if they're sold by an art professional. Think about TikTok. Little known musicians can get their big break by writing a viral song. But people take the song and they add to it. They make it their own, as they would like to say on American Idol. In the metaverse, it could be even simpler to monetize this popularity for a couple of important reasons. The first relates to those smart contracts. These can automate transactions when preset conditions are met. The second is equally crucial to understanding the metaverse business models that we'll explore in this series. People will become more than just consumers. They are creators too. They're able to build on the creations of others and then resell them with the original creator taking a royalty each time. Band royalty shows how NFTs can be used for commercial purposes. They have purchased the royalty rights to a number of music artists. Then users can buy in by purchasing an NFT and then they choose where to place their stakes. As Band Royalty explains, if a Justin Timberlake song is used in a commercial during the Super Bowl, everyone who holds rights to that song will split the royalties earned. And it's possible to nft eyes anything, so we're really only scratching the surface here. In February 2021, Nike filed a suit against the crypto asset reseller StockX. StockX had released NFTs related to real-world Nike products. Nike said the resulting crypto assets constitute trademark infringement. Now this is an interesting test of metaverse copyright laws, but there's more here. Nike has filed patents for a digital locker. So when customers buy a real product, they would get a metaverse virtual version too. And they filed a patent for crypto kicks, which can be customized in the metaverse. Now, based on what we have already seen, could Nike maintain royalty rights for those new creations? Customers would become collaborators, monetizing their own versions of products, but Nike would retain the original rights. 
In this world, customers become creators, they become salespeople and brand ambassadors, all while monetizing their own efforts and promoting the brand. If that all sounds a little too good to be true, it's probably because right now, I think it is. I'm always reminded of Karl von Clausewitz's quote when I look at patents like these. Everything takes a different shape when we pass from abstractions to reality. In its current format, the NFT standard needs more flexible smart contracts and stricter enforcement across platforms and wallets. It will take collective, corrective effort to make this happen, but it is possible. If brands can learn to let go of their identity a little and embrace collaboration, they could open the door to an entirely new business model with NFT royalties.